Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today I want to talk about something that's not really super techy, but I think it's going to be useful to some people. Um, we all have cars, most of us have key fobs. I've worn the buttons out of this one. So, to buy a brand new key fob is very expensive. Um, and I was trying to research some options on, on what to do with this. And I discovered that they uh, actually make replacement shells. So, ta-da, I mean, look at this. I mean, you know, replacement shell. So we're gonna just kind of go through today um, taking this apart and putting the shell on this. Um, it's gonna be the first time I'm doing this. Nice drive run through. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna look at our replacement one. We'll go ahead and open this up. And, um, you know, the back pops off. This is where your battery and your innards go in there. And um, I'm just gonna kinda pry this shell apart a little bit. You know, if you got like a screwdriver or this one is handy, I fix it kits, you know, you can kind of just work this out. Kind of get in there with your pry tools. A little bit more. There you go. So this will come out because you don't you don't need this. Um, I'll set that aside, set that spring aside. So here's your, your fob. Um, you got your little buttons and stuff. Um, this comes apart here. Looks pretty, pretty simple. So let's take apart our actual fob now. So I'll go ahead and open that. I'm gonna try to take a little bit more care with this one. Let's go ahead and pop our battery out of there too while we're in there. You can see, you know, you got your electronics and stuff. So we'll go ahead here again. We'll pry a little bit right here. All right, guys. So I've been really um, struggling with this factory key fob here. Um, <clears throat> so I went online, did some research. So you can see I've, I've kind of mangled it, trying to get at it. And they recommended taking a flathead screwdriver and putting it in here and this should just pop off. Well, at the time I didn't have, oh, sorry, excuse me. So they recommended putting like a, a flathead screwdriver right here and then just popping it up and it should open right up. Well, the problem is, is it really wasn't doing that at first. And, um, you know, I didn't have a proper flat, flathead screwdriver at the time, so I was doing all kinds of stuff. But, hey, it's broken. So once you do get a flathead in here, you can just start to pop it apart as you can see there just kind of start to work at it now this just to note is a lot tougher than the, than the aftermarket one to get at um, you know which kind of kind of sucks like I don't First, I thought it was glued in, but it appears not to be glued in. I'll try to get some of this in there. There we go. It's kind of starting to pop around it. Use some of those. Let's try the screwdriver a little bit more. There we go. It's popping off a lot easier. Perfect. And there it is, the thing of beauty or something. So this is the part that's important. All right, so I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but um, in here, there are two, there are three slots. This one's a little more raised and these are a little bit lower. Now, when you look on this piece here, you're gonna see here that you got one that's raised and two that are lower so what you're going to do is you're going to drop 
this in so that the two lower ones come through and fall straight through and your button pops out like like that and then you can put your spring in there I really wish this kind of fit in there a little bit better but like I said we'll make it oh wait a minute I see something so on this side here there's some posts here and here and this is where this just became neat for me so if you put this board of the switches straight down um, it'll line up on those posts perfect so there so that fits on the posts you got that in place so then you're going to take this there's a post here and you're going to put it on your spring and you're going to clamp down and you'll hear a satisfying snap and then you'll hit the button and nothing will happen all right so i'm going to try this again i found out after a little bit of research that um you're going to want your key extended when you do this and there's a little notch on the spring here and that's going to catch in the top of this so you're going to want to put this here and line it up and then you're going to kind of wind this a couple times all right so we got it together and it opens so I that was a bit of um, a pain so when you put this I'm not going to take this back apart because man I don't want to have to do that too many times so when you're getting ready to put when you put that uh, that spring on here and it's in this part you're going to want to take this and spin it this way you know uh, counterclockwise so that it winds the, the spring and that's how you get you know that to, to pop up and that's a bit of a chore because this doesn't quite clip in there uh, the, 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 the circuit board so it, it kind of sits there on those pegs so as you're trying to wind it that thing's popping up and I'm gonna tell you that was a bit of an experience so I'm gonna go ahead and put our battery in here and we're gonna put the back on here and um, we now have replaced our key fob good as new you know um, yeah so I hope this shows some value to you guys um, you know like and subscribe if it was uh, leave a comment um, you know it's not my normal type of stuff but like I said I wanted to do something that was um, I thought it was useful you know and I was trying to figure out you know I didn't want to have to buy another key fob or spend like you know you know a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars however much it is I so I thought this was kind of cool to be able to do this so anyways, this is Lewis from Tech. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you later.